Okay, this is the Dove Lady starting a new video. And this is of the orbs, I see. And they're getting rather interesting. First off, I want to explain this picture. You see in this picture, this source of light is right, this white area. And when the orbs come from that light, they usually have a teardrop shape. And as they get out a little further, they start getting distinctions in these teardrop-shaped orbs. And you see this one has got color cords, and they're going down like that. But if I move my camera where I'm looking at this spay of light that comes from the source, it really would turn that way, if, or straight up and down. The rays would come out like, like thinning out from around uh, the source light. And, the, and these individual rays go in, in the direction of, I don't know how to say, like a fan. Like, you know, up and down, straight up and down if I, if I move my camera in that direction. So the light that comes from this in this portion is different than when it gets out a little further. It's usually always color corded with all these really intense colors that seem to be like threads of color. And uh, sometimes they look a little different, but now look at this one. One day, just one day, I started getting in that little orb that comes from the source, this ring. And there were several of them in several orbs. I couldn't get more than one orb in the picture at a time, but many of the orbs I saw through the viewer of my camera were having these little rings and they have a little spot right beside it that's another smaller ring. You can't see it real good in this picture. And then these orb, these little rings would embed themselves in other orbs that I get out a little further from the source and I get bigger, rounder orbs. This is one as it was coming from the light. And you see the light was like right down here. And that's why this is coming out that way because I was on that side of the, on the right side of the light taking this picture. Uh oh. And uh, these orb, I mean these, uh, yeah, these orbs of this type, this close to the light source are just so colorful and so pretty, but pretty much the, always pretty much just the color corded things, but the ring that came in it was just a one day activity. I think that's, that's not a good example of one, but here's a good example of as the orbs come from the light, they have this teardrop shape. And according to what angle I am to that light, the rays go in that direction. And sometimes I hit spots that turn into darkness because, like in this one, for instance, on this side right here, you don't see the entire teardrop shape because somewhere in the spectrum of light that goes from that source light, there's a dark ray. And when you run into it, you just run into darkness. And I've noticed several of them. But this day I got these rings, I was just really excited. And so at this one, they look. It starts looking like there's one ring connected to another, like a chain almost. I couldn't quite get the whole of it into the picture, but this one definitely look, definitely looks like there's a second ring right here. There's another picture. And then, now this this spectrum of light that I'm filming with my old camera. I always, when I find this little character, my friend of the light, which I call K Harry, is going to be somewhere close around because this is like part of his territory. This is what is around him. So, there he was. He showed up. And uh, Harry is this big blob of something here, whatever you might want to call it. it, has these little structures that stretch out from it. I'll show you some better examples of him. 
I know. And this is also in Harry's world. And look here. This is the ring that I saw coming from the light source on a previous day, on the only day that I ever got it coming from the light source. And here it is in the spectrum of light that Harry inhabits. So I was real excited. I said, the ring went to you, didn't it, Harry? <laughs> because here I am in your spectrum of light, and the ring is there. See, always in Harry's world, there's little things that look similar to this ring. Only they're not making a ring. They're usually straight. These are more of the ring. It looks like it's there more than one time. So I kept filming these. And then, of course, Harry shows up. Because I'm in his neck of the woods. And he stays for a long time and lets me get a lot of good pictures. I'll show you some of the pictures I have of him. Sometimes an orb will hide part of Harry. Another intruding orb. But Harry has these little light things that hang from his body. They don't actually hang, they extend upward like, and there's one real long protruding one that goes off to the left there. So he's a very strange character. Actually, let me show you this, hold on a second. I've been so intrigued with Harry that I made this thing. I made this thing right here to try to look like him. It's uh, made out of wire and painted, and I was trying to capture his look. But I don't know how well I did. But I see him so often that I'm friend I'm, I call myself his friend. And sometimes with Harry, I can say, for Harry, show yourself. But he doesn't. And other times, when I want him to show up, he does show up right away. So I was catching him and the ring in his little world of light. And of course, I don't know what any of this means. Here's one of the characters in Harry's world, this thing right here. Always, I see that in his world, among other things. But... What I wanted to show you most of all was how the ring is in Harry's world. And so I said, said to myself, I want to do a movie of you, Harry. So I put my camera in movie mode. And here that movie is. I'm going to see if I can't get it to roll for you. Now, I'm going to go through a lot of this really fast. And you won't hear my voice. <laughs> you could if I turned it up, but I'm looking into his world and looking for Harry because I've just taken so many still pictures of him. But notice this about this. There's these two eyes always in every orb that I take a picture of with that old camera. Why is it that all these orbs, even if they were five or ten orbs, they would all have the two eyes if you could see them all? But there's a lot of things going on now. See, there is the ring. That part of this is the ring that is in Harry's world. And I was looking for him. But while looking for him, exploring some of the other things that are around him. But I was very surprised to see the ring in his world. <laughs> in his spectrum of light world. Now, a lot of this is just searching, searching for Harry, but I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna move this and get to the part where I finally find him. So you don't have to go through all that. Sometimes you have to have an emotion for something to occur in this world of light. And I started feeling very strongly like, oh, I've really been missing seeing you, Harry. I, I really would love to see you because I love the way you always appear. And when I felt the emotional part of caring for Harry to show up, it wasn't long after that that he did. 
So let me see, I'll turn the voice on because he's going to appear here any minute. I was about to give up. My fingers were so tired of holding that camera. I was like, okay, Harry, I'm tired of looking for you. I'm tired of waiting for you to show up. I was feeling some emotion. And a lot of our reaching out to beings of, in the worlds that are mostly invisible to us involves our feeling of emotion because they respond to that. That's probably mostly all they can respond to is our, is our emotional seven life. Minutes. Nobody wants to look at a video for seven minutes. I was, <laughs> I was saying, show up because this People is getting rather long. I want to bring it a little further on because I think it was a minute or two more before I saw him. Well, I'm giving up. <laughs> I'm about to give up there. Because my arm is about to break off of me. Oh, and Harry, that is. I couldn't really give up. I kept thinking, well, Harry will show up. But I've already found you so many times tonight and taken your picture. I'm not disappointed. No, that's not you. I thought it was. Oh, it's toward the end of this video, you. which is rather long. Nine minutes. I'm into it right now. Okay, he should show up. Sometimes, that's for sure. I guess you don't want to be. And I have to fuss with my camera because I've kind of ruined it because I take pictures of light. I think this works with the mechanism. Oh, there you are. There he is. He there showed up. And, and so the, the focus on it will go out and in, and the camera makes a lot of noise sometimes, too. A little critter. <laughs> you showed up. You. Even though I don't know what you are, you visit me in my camera. Makes me sound kind of like a real dumb yeah, person. I, sound, I sound kind of uh, ignorant talking about a light that. creature that is a friend of mine. Up. I, I think I'll turn. Time. Off, I think I'll turn off the away. voice, and just talk to you now because I was talking to Harry. I get a little emotional when I do sometimes, and it sounds kind of crazy to anyone who doesn't understand. But I feel like I have reached into an invisible world for the most part, learned something about light and what is in light, photographed and have photographic evidence. But now there are people out there that would say, well, this is just something in your camera that is a piece of debris. But I just can't buy that anymore. If they had the experience I have had with looking at all the things that I do see with this camera, they would not think that it was debris. For a while there, I thought it might could be. But, uh, no. I'm just looking into something that I know so little about and I don't know who to go to to ask about what this might be. If even I could get the attention of someone who studies these little tiny photons of light. But sometimes in uh, the scientific community there are already people with opinions that they don't want to see what they believe done away with in a way. So they stick, they're almost as bad as religions that stick to dogma and won't change. But I would like to introduce the world to Harry. He's the first little light creature that, I stopped the video there, but he's the first little light creature that I've ever seen in these orb in these orbs of light plus there was another but there is see that little thing right there that little black circle it kept traveling with me into each and every place I moved around into let me see if I can point him out again it might be him here this one I know that you see lots of circles it seems like these orbs have circles within circles within circles and with concentric circles around them. And 
Then some little, if you could see up close into this, you would see little tiny ones, little tiny circles. Really, really small that it's almost invisible to see them. Unless I pull you up, like these right here are small. These little circles here. There's so many circles that this camera captures, and my other camera does too, capture some of these circles. But my newer camera doesn't have all this, all these artifacts in it, like this one and that one. And I'm always talking about my artifacts that are in these. This one right here, for example, this little peapod looking thing. And further down, this one here that is double jointed. Those are always fixed in my camera in certain spots, one up high, one down low to the right. And there's a few more other things like this little thing right here. So, since they're always on the same place on the page of whatever I film, if it's not into the darkness, they won't show up if it's all dark. But if there's some lightness behind them, they do show up. And they're always pretty much in the same place. So, I call them the artifacts of that camera. But I used to have only one, this little one right here which is mirrored, you can see it's also right there again in the second orb that's behind this orb. So uh, a lot of times they get mirrored two or three times. But with my new camera, I caught this same little formation in it, not as an artifact that always stays there, but it was just in one of my orb pictures, and so was the double-jointed one. And so I recognized them in my new camera as the artifacts in my old camera. <laughs> it's like, what? What's going on here? But um, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm looking into something that might be kind of crazy if we can't think outside the box. See, there's my double-jointed artifact. And I think they're growing in that old camera. Something from another dimension is growing in that old camera. And it doesn't look familiar to anything except in our world, except maybe something microscopic, you know, if you're used to looking at things through a microscope. But when I look at this light with my camera and the way that I do it, it seems like it makes of the light a microscope of what's in the light. I've gotten so many very beautiful pictures. Let me see if I can take you to just a few. I want to run this, since I have a lot long, longer time to talk, these are some special ones I made up that I might would someday get an enlargement so I make it as a framed picture for my wall. So I took some of my very most colorful orbs and I did a little cutting away the part that wasn't colorful like the background that might have been all black and I focused right up into the orb and you'll see these beautiful orbs go by and I'm just going to be quiet and let you look at a few of them. Sometimes, well, yeah, can't be quiet. Sometimes in the evening, I set this on in my, on my computer to run in Picasso, and in this mode of pan and zoom, and I just watch. I sit back in a darkened room and just watch these colorful things go by. It's very relaxing. So I will let you have that, that privilege of getting to watch this, and I will shut up. I can do it. I can shut up for a while.
it's quiet in the house today because everybody has gone somewhere. Nobody is playing their music in their rooms or walking by the door and just making noises. And the train hasn't even come by to honk, to honk and disturb me. It's unusual to have silence here. But I make my videos in spite of that. In spite of the background noises. I was reading something by an Ascended Master the other day and the statement he made about the atom was that at the nucleus of the atom is an electronic fireball. And I thought, wow, you know, that, that might be what I'm looking at, the nucleus of an atom. These coming by just now, they look like Easter eggs to me. <laughs> Very colorful Easter eggs. I want to mention here that I think that this is something, this light seen in this way, is something that people can see even without a camera. Because a lot of times when I look at the light, I see these strands of light, and they seem to be dimensions within them where you like you could weave in and out of the strands of light if they show like dimension. And sometimes when I'm looking at the light, what I, I see things that I can't capture with my camera. I wish I could because they are so unusual. It's like all around us there are veils that are so thin and wispy. And they have in them, they have some of the things like what you see in these pictures of orbs that go by. They have patterns and designs, but... The way I see them when I'm not looking at it through the camera is they are just spaced in like a net of them. With They're like little lines that make highways and divisions and there's center points where there's a lot of color 
and there's parts that look like they're elevated like it were a mountain and uh, they constantly change Oops, not got a quiet house anymore. Someone's home. You're back. Good. The noise has returned. I will shut my door to make it a little less noisy. I have looked all over Google Images for pictures of photons of light or the spectrum of light or light prisms or I, I don't find anything quite like this. But I did find an author one time, I mean a painter, and he would get some orbs that were real similar to mine, only they didn't have color except that he introduced color. He had little laser lights of different colors that he would shine into the area where he was going to take the picture. But he didn't take it with a digital camera. He had a big fancy camera. I forget what Connie said it was. But he would get orbs somewhat similar to mine with artificially introduced colored lights in them, which I wish I could be in contact with him. I could show him. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to introduce any little laser lights to get the light because with color, because it's all around us color is. But uh, I lost that website where that was. Maybe I'll find it again. Light is a fascinating subject. I get this little character right here a lot. He looks like an X or something like that. There it is again, sort of right there. Now all these pictures going by are ones I've taken with my new camera. Otherwise you would see a lot of circles in everything and my artifacts that my old camera gets. I guess what it is, is the strength of the ability of the camera has something to do with what pictures you're going to get. Some cameras are able to get past certain things and others can't without recording them in their picture. But I like my old camera because it gets me some of the most interesting pictures. But my new camera gets me some of the most beautiful pictures. Because like this one, it's not all marred up with little peapod things and all kinds of stuff. But it does still have the circles just like the old camera. See, there's one right there. And you can see them in the background of a lot of things. Little circles. 
and with circles inside them and with circles inside the circles within them. Oh gosh, you can see me in this video. You can see my hand there in that dark part. I think you can see it. I will look. At, when this plays back, I'll see if I see it. I'm pointing with my finger. I'm pointing at you. <laughs> I'm going to turn the light off in the room. Sometimes the picture doesn't fill the whole expanse of the page here. And I see my head and my fingers and my camera and the light that's on the front of my camera. And especially I see my window with an ivy plant in it in the background. That shows up a lot. You know, that artist that I was telling you about that took pictures of orbs in a special, unique way that only he knows, I guess. But it's not in the same way that I do. Well, he had them for sale on his site. And I just cannot associate commercial activity with the, the uh, ability to take these pictures. And I may be totally wrong. Maybe it's quite okay to uh, sell things of this sort. But I would say to anyone out there who wants any pictures like this sent to them that I could send them to them and they can get them blown up or made into portraits of some, not portraits, but landscape or abstract art or whatever you would want to call it because they would add such a big splash of color to any room, some of these. I'm going to get one of them blown up real big, but I have this dilemma, and it is, which one? <laughs> Maybe I could do two or three. They're like about $25 a piece to get them blown up big, like the size of a most wall hangings that you would have a wall picture I can't think of the dimensions but it's not real cheap to get things blown up big but I'm going to get three or four of them done anyway now just to decide what those will be which ones I want real real big for my wall 
that is the hardest decision of all to make because I like so many of them. My mother was an artist, called herself the Vagabond Artist, and she mostly specialized in doing the quick sketch of a person's face. But she also did other kinds of art. But she was mostly a portrait artist that would, if you would sit still for maybe 30 minutes, she would get a real good likeness of you. And she would do that for people, and she said, Pay me whatever you want. You know, if they paid a dollar, that was fine. But some people would, you know, give her five or ten dollars. But she never really wanted to say, you have to pay so much. She would tell them, well, my cost is about a dollar because she used real special paper. And maybe even that was a little high as far as the cost. It just cost her time. <laughs> But time is money, they say. But she did it for the joy of doing it. Her love for doing the portrait of people was her love for people. And when they gave her money, that she liked that. Because she, she called it her mad money, you know. Like, wow, I've got some money here. I can get some more art supplies or, you know, do something fun. I sure miss her. She would love this art. She would say, wow, you didn't even have to get out paint and brushes <laughs> and you create all this marvelous art. If she were looking over my shoulders right now, I think she would be fascinated. I don't find many people, even among family members, they don't care about this. It's not important to them. It's like, no big deal. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, this is a whole new world of light that we haven't seen before. Where is your normal curiosity? But there's no accounting for people. I, I think there's so many things that fascinate out there, so many things that are contrived, too, that fascinate people and confuse us because sometimes we don't know what's real or what is photoshopped because photoshopping can do a lot to pictures and that is something I know not how to do. I've never really wanted to do that. And I want to get things as they look. I don't want to change them into what they are not. And when I'm working with these pictures, all I ever do is go to the exposure of lighting and what I do to make it show up is I add a little more darkness to it and I decrease the amount of light because I have noticed with these that if you have too much light it all is blurry and without distinction but when you add a little darkness then the colors become more vibrant and the lines you can see where the lines are and when you take away some of the light the color even shows up more so uh, that's the only altering of the picture that I do other than cropping it, you know, to get just a certain portion of the picture and not the, not the parts that are too much darkness in that area. But I only ever fool with just the lighting. I do know how to use that portion of Picasso that lets you add certain colors or use or warmify it or whatever, you know, all the things that it will do. But I don't want to do that because I have so much color. What would I, why would I want to change the color? It's already magnificent. <laughs> it's astonishing the colors that are all around us. And we're practically swimming in all this color. Now, I've also heard people say that the third eye 
will show you things like this, you know, when your third eye is open. But they say that the third eye is activated by darkness, which has not been my experience because my, uh, my third eye I know definitely is opening. I don't think it's fully open, but I do see it. When I'm looking at light, I see a part of my eye outside of myself. It's like the flaps of my eye. And when, when I'll show you when they, I see it sort of like this. Like, see my fingers? I see that when I'm looking at light. And if I squint my eyes, that goes in. If I open my eyes wider, it opens up like that. And I'm seeing this outside my body, and it's corresponding to the movements of my eye. So I'm pretty sure it must be my third eye. The pineal gland. I need to look more into that. I've read that it is the shape of a pine cone. And that there's a watery substance within it. I don't know how this picture of a flower got in with this mix. I thought I got them weeded out. But it is a beautiful flower that grows in my yard. I love that flower. It's a big bush with those flowers on it. Well, I've been filming now for 43 minutes. I really don't know how much time Google gives me anymore. It could be that I have more than an hour. I don't really know how you go about finding out. But I, I at least have an hour. And the, the cameras I use won't go that long, so I haven't done more than an hour. Most I've done is about 57 minutes of filming. I'm going to take this one as long as it will give me, see if it will do better than 57 this time. I'm using a little flip camera, very inexpensive little camera that my grandson gave me. Fireball, electronic fireball at the center of the atom in the nucleus. And you can see it and it's colorful. And you don't have to use the Haldron Collider to force the atom to give up its secrets. You just be friendly to the atom. And you will be guided, I think, to explore all you want into the intricacies of atoms and photons of light, dark matter, maybe this is dark matter sometimes, I think it might be, because it's right there in front of us, and we don't see it. It's only dark in the sense that we don't see it. It's definitely, definitely, when you're looking at it, if this is what that dark matter is, it's definitely not dark. It's every color, but it incorporates the dark. When I'm looking at uh, the photons of light as I'm filming them, sometimes a big, huge swath, swatch of darkness sort of creeps into the orb, like right there. There's a good example. And sometimes it covers it completely. Oh, I like that one. I like that one a lot. Maybe I'll do that one as a big picture. Can you imagine if you give a scientific explanation as best one could and use these pictures on a big screen like a movie theater has, a huge screen, and all these colors come cascading down, maybe even have it in one of those IMAX theaters where you have 
the visual all around you except for maybe behind you. You have it to the sides and up above your head. I don't know if it would lend itself to being filmed that way though. That's why I'd like to get people who are photographers interested in taking pictures of light in this manner because it is so gorgeous. Forty-seven minutes it's at now. People are fascinated by light, especially up high above them. That's why we love fireworks. People are just, well, crazy about fireworks, and they'll go and sit out in, the, in their cars or out look, look at the um, fireworks. They'll be right where they're being shot off, and, the, and then it looks like they're cascading right down upon them. They're laying on blankets looking up in the sky. And it's just thrilling for people to see colorful light in the sky. But it goes away so fast. It's over with and done so quickly. <laughs> and this light will stay there as long as you want to look at it when you project it on the computer camera, as I'm doing. And some nights when I'm just looking without taking pictures, I'm just looking at the light and I see spectacular scenes, almost as pretty as these. But it's a little hurtful to my eye. When a direct beam of light comes into your eye, it can strain your eye a bit. So I can't look at it for long. My camera can look at it for much longer than I can. Because the next day, or even that very same day, my eyes feel weak, but the strength always comes back. It's just that, you know, it kind of gives me a headache sometimes. But my fascination and my curiosity keeps me going back <laughs> to look at the light some more. And the fascinating thing about this is it, it doesn't have to be the sun you're looking at. The sun would make these same exact things that you're seeing. But you have to filter out so much of the light from the sun. When I take outdoor orb pictures, they're never as colorful as my indoor ones because there's just always too much light coming into my camera. But the same exact formations that are in the light that I take outdoors are in the artificial light that I that, that is a little lead light that I use in my room and uh, it's light is light whether it's coming from the sun or whether it's coming from a lamp It's the same light. That was an unusual one there. It just had one little streak of light coming through it instead of a whole bunch of them. I'm at 51 minutes. I may be cut off abruptly. I may be talking and then this just ends. But I'm determined to let this little flip camera go as long as it will. I have enough pictures, thousands, <laughs> that would, can roll by while it takes... Okay, this one, that, that's an artifact. 